an inconvenient alphabet. Ben Franklin and Noah Webster's Spelling Revolution. Written by Beth Anderson. Illustrated by Elizabeth Badley. You've probably heard of the American Revolution when 13 colonies rejected the rule of England. But there was another, much quieter, revolution in the colonies. Two men, one old, one young, both with big ideas, battled an inconvenient alphabet. Ben Franklin, a writer and printer, had no patience for people spelling words every which way. They should write the sounds they heard. But how could anyone spell words correctly when letters didn't match sounds? So Ben created a new alphabet. He threw out C, J, Q, W, X, and Y. He added a, uh, ed, ing, ish, and f. Each letter had its own had its own sound. No more ABCs. That says aw. Uh, uh, mm, mm, sh. Ben shared his ideas and left them to take their chance in the world. When no one was interested in his alphabet, he tucked it away and focused on the business of the colonies. Boom. The Patriots declared independence from England. Armies marched. Cannons boomed. When the war ended, the colonies pulled together to form a nation. But Americans from north to south and east to west couldn't understand one another. Some spoke like the King of England, others like backwoodsmen, and many barely spoke English at all. Vat perfect vader! I understand not ye English, kind sir. Bagaguga. Noah Webster, a writer and educator, had no patience for people pronouncing words every which way. They should say the sounds that were written. But how could anyone say words correctly when sounds didn't match letters? So Noah created a book to teach American English. Grammar lessons, speaking instruction, page after page of pronunciation practice. Noah hoped people would soon converse together like children of the same family. But Noah was a nobody. Some thought his voice squeaky and his speeches boring. No one appreciated his work. If only someone famous would join his efforts. Someone respected. Someone the public adored. Day after day, Noah traveled and lectured, selling his blue-backed speller, Richmond, Baltimore, Dover. In early 1786, Noah arrived in Philadelphia. More than anything, he needed to find support in a new capital, a city bustling with patriotism and promise. He called on publishers and governors, scientists and statesmen. He shared his ideas about American English. People listened and nodded, but Noah hoped for more. Finally, he arrived at the door of the most famous, most respected, most adored man in the city, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. The two men spoke for hours about language and education, about reading and writing. Ben appreciated Noah's work. Noah was interested in Ben's ideas. Both agreed. Some letters had too many sounds. Goat, giraffe, laugh, gnat, ring, light. Some sounds had too many letters. Kite, chorus, cat, quiet. Some letters were just not needed at all. 
like the B in lamb, or the L in walk, or the K in the C in knock, and the E in give. The problem was the inconvenient alphabet. Using 26 letters to write 44 sounds caused nothing but trouble. Pleased to find someone young and enthusiastic, Ben dug out his old alphabet and dusted off his print blocks. Soon every printer would need, a, would need a set, new letter blocks to combine with old ones to spell words in new ways. He gave them to Noah and asked him to come up with a plan. Energized by, his, by a partnership with Dr. Franklin, Noah set to work. If letters matched sounds, you could read any word correctly. If sounds matched letters, you could spell any word you heard. Adding a few new letters, removing a few old ones, Noah created a perfect alphabet. Noah sent Ben the plan. A new alphabet for a new nation. Ben approved. Noah spoke to merchants and war heroes, farmers and booksellers. Now is the time, and this the country, he said. But after eight years of war, people had no patience for, the change, for changing the alphabet every which way. They just wanted life to return to normal. Noah soon realized that even Ben couldn't make people accept new letters. A new alphabet was even more con inconvenient than the old one. While his friend labored over the Constitution, an idea stirred in Noah's mind. What if they didn't change the alphabet? Plan B. Armed with the 26 letters of the English alphabet everyone knew and loved, Noah launched a spelling revolution, ready to turn wrong spelling into right. Out with silent letters. Out with unnecessary extras. One vowel sound, or one vowel for short sounds, two for long. One sound for each letter. No confusion. Free at last from the king's English with its unreliable rules. From north to south and east to west, all citizens would spell the same and speak the same. The states would truly be united. In city after city, Noah appealed to writers and printers, schoolmasters and penny pinchers. Without extra letters, they'd save time, save paper, save money. Children could learn to read and write in one year instead of four. He answered questions, explained every detail. Old meanings and spellings didn't matter. Was peace ever mistaken for peace? Pray for pray? Flower for flower? Never. No inconvenience, Noah said. Good spellers could learn in a week. Poor spellers could rejoice. They were already doing it right. Ben studied Noah's plan. Excellent work, he wrote. Old and ailing, Ben still believed in making reading and writing easier. He still believed in spelling changes. He still believed in Noah. When Ben died in 1790, Noah carried on, trying out new spellings with the public. Spelling reform. Build the character of this great nation. American English. Just write what you hear with words that are easier to spell. Reading, writing, and speaking will improve. If you can read this, you can see how easy it is. As you know, sometimes what appears to be easy can turn out to be hard. Noah understood. Too many changes. He forged ahead. Plan C. Noah focused on one change. Drop silent letters. Simple, sensible, only slightly inconvenient. Dropped the U out of honor. He tried to take the S out of island. Newspapermen began to use the new spellings. Authors refused. Neither mattered. 
because American people were unwilling to change their old habits, unwilling to be bothered, unwilling to take liberties with their language. But Noah was getting closer. As the spelling revolution faded, a new idea stirred in his mind. A dictionary. An American dictionary. With the country's new words, new meanings, and yes, some new spellings. Noah read and researched, wrote and revised. In 1806, he published his first dictionary with 37,000 words. And like his old friend Ben, Noah let his idea take its chance in the world. Americans from north to south and east to west began to use the same English. Noah kept on. Twenty-two years later, his American Dictionary of the English Language boasted 70,000 words. Today, American dictionaries include many of Noah's spelling changes and thousands upon thousands of new words, all spelled with the same old, alf incon the same old inconvenient alphabet. Letters with too many sounds, sounds with too many letters, and some letters just not needed, just not needed at all. Next time you sound out a word, think of Ben and Noah. They would be pleased because that is exactly what they wanted.